welcome back. It's a little more badass. We got uh, Earl's coming in from Saskatoon later with his band going to play live. That's a great song. I was really loving yeah, that. Yeah, you guys were all bouncing around. And we got Joanna Paris here who has launched already the Etiquette Revolution. Right, Joanna? Yes, I have. I started with um, an Etiquette Week in the schools, in some of the high schools. Uh, reason for that, I'm sure you're going to ask me. Yes. Yes, of course, <laughs> Joanna. <laughs> Is because I think that um, old school manners and etiquette can be cool. We can bring it forward today to deal with issues that we have today and make more savvy and approachable young people. That also goes for some adults. It does. Now, um, Boy, I got a lot of questions about this. But first of all, you've already presented this at a couple of schools, have yes, you? Yes, I have. No, and whereabouts were these schools? In Scarborough. All right. Scarborough. Yeah. And uh, I'm just curious, how did you present them? And how were, I'm, I'm curious how they were received. Okay. Um, I have some very forward thinking principles that I work with. And I put the idea to them to have an etiquette week. And they love the idea because in those schools I teach etiquette anyway, etiquette and, and manners. And You're teaching first this impressions. in school, in high school? In high school, first impressions, manners, etiquette, dining etiquette. And so they accepted this because what a lot of them found was that um, the kids are great, but um, thank you, please, may I, missing mm -hmm. in a lot of instances, mm -hmm. uh, climbing stairs, Everybody would rush. Nobody takes uh, a side. You know, you should walk up the right, come down the right, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, people were just rushing and pushing everyone else. You go into the cafeteria, nobody would say, may I have some of this, please? And when they're finished, they don't clean up after themselves. So it came across well. Um, we had the schools. We did this in, uh, started it in assembly. Mm -hmm. And every day for the week, you had two codes that you had to pay attention to. For example, today could be walking. You walk tall. You stand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. It's an, a, a, jerk, a neat jerk reaction. <laughs> everybody sits up straight, walks tall. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a, everybody says, thank you, please, and everybody's just polite. So that what they did, the teachers, they um, observed the children, and you got points. So the child who had the most points won a prize. And the class that did the best in overall manners and etiquette also won a prize. So that was interesting. And some people found it so good that we're going to do it on a yearly basis. Some people want it quarterly, but I don't know if we can deal with that, but yeah. on a yearly basis. Well, a yearly is a, is a good start. Yes. So when you're teaching this in school, is it, is it like a regular high school course? Um, we use the time, yes. They allot um, a certain time for us because it's not on the curriculum. Okay. But they allot a certain time for us, so the same period that you would have for an additional class. And um, we just work during that class. Mm -hmm. Introductions, handshakes. How do you meet somebody? What do you say to them? Introducing yourself properly. Your table manners at school, at home, because whatever you do, it should become second nature. It should not be something that's feigned. It should be something that's natural. Yeah. And, and manners and etiquette should be second nature. So Joanna, so how did you get into this? <laughs> you know, like what's your story? I mean, you were telling me that your dad was a bass player, but... Uh, <laughs> What? Uh... Uh, my story. I started as a tall and thin, ugly waif. And Kate Moss is gorgeous, but she's also a waif. I used to weigh 115 pounds at this height. So I was endlessly teased and, as they call it now, bullied in class. And I grew up feeling inferior because I was taller than everybody else, boys included, so a date was out of the question. And then I met this woman one day who thought I was gorgeous. So now that was the laugh of the century. And she invited me to a fashion show, and I'm thinking, fashion show? Me? Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was real. It did happen. And because of that, I was chosen to represent the country I was born in, Trinidad and Tobago, at the Commonwealth Fashion Show. 
And that opened my eyes to a whole different world and a whole different way of doing things. And I um, modeled in Europe and in um, the United States for quite a while before I went back home. A friend of mine owned two beauty pageants, Miss World and Miss Universe. And um, I worked with her to teach the girls how to walk, how to present themselves. And then I went and did um, dining etiquette programs in the United States. And so that's how I got involved. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay, so now, and you mentioned now you're taking this revolution mm -hmm. to the high school. What is it about, I mean, what is it, what do you see in the culture around us that kind of uh, inspires you that this is something that you need to do? Because um, I was brought up to say thank you and please. I was brought up to be gracious and kind. And um, etiquette and manners is just using your common sense, your graciousness, and your kindness. And um, when you look around, people are not very gracious or very kind. I am old-fashioned in the sense that if I go to a restaurant, I expect a gentleman to hold the door for me or to pull the chair for me and help me sit, that kind of thing. And it seems to be a lost art. When I started teaching in the high schools, I found that the boys, interestingly enough, were more interested than the girls. So I found out, well, why are the boys more interested? We can get dates easier, didn't you know? <laughs> <laughs> True. So it meant that there was an interest and there was a reason for doing it. So therefore, I continued doing it. And I still find that boys are much more interested than young women. And I think soon we're going to have to have special classes for young women because um, this happened a long time ago when women burned their bras and all that, when the feminine movement started. It has been great, but there have been disadvantages because I have been in occasion where you're on a bus and a young man will get up for a woman to sit down, perhaps a pregnant woman, I've seen this happen, and she refuses because there's nothing wrong with her. And all he was doing is being courteous. Mm. Now the trouble is, when does a man know when he should be courteous? He doesn't know anymore <laughs> because he doesn't know if he's just going to get rejected in his offer of help. Exactly. So we have to show young women that it's great to be independent and self-sufficient, but when somebody lends you a hand, you know, be gracious about it and uh, sit down or say no thank you in a nice manner rather than making the person feel badly. Mm -hmm. So Okay, do you think things are getting, um, okay, so we had the bra burning <laughs> feminist movement yes. back in the uh, late 60s, in early the 70s, whatever. But do you think that, um, that the, the kind of the manners, the etiquette ha in, in the culture in general has kind of slipped? It has deteriorated quite a bit and um, several reasons. We don't have the family unit that we used to have. We don't sit down to dinner as a family because father's working one shift, mother's working one shift, so and then you have one parent families. Um, before you had what I know as the extended family, there's not much of that happening. So with the extended family, um, the grandparents or the aunts would look after, or uncles would look after the children. Plus, I think you had that the kids or all people felt that they belonged to that extended family. Yes. So they had a sense of belonging and that extended to the community. Yes. Right? Whereas now people don't really feel connected to... Very Either little, family or community. Very little community spirit happening or, or, or family, which is, which is not necessarily a good thing. Mm -hmm. The other thing that um, helps with bad manners is that we have become a um, technical, logical society. And I have seen people at the same dinner table texting one another. And I'm always appalled because I do not mm -hmm. understand... Could you not just say, excuse me, Joanna, <laughs> and ask your question? Do you have to text me? Mm -hmm. Parents, uh, uh, children are home and they text their parents upstairs because they don't have time to run uh, upstairs or downstairs, you know? And um, if you're having a meal, your phone should be put away. Mm -hmm. If you're expecting a call that is important, you ask to be excused and you remove yourself from the table. But that very seldom happens, you know? 
And the other big thing that's, that's evident today, when you're going for an interview for a job, if you're getting a job that's going to give you serious money, you couldn't take your phone and use your phone while you were at the interview. Yet some people do it. I'm surprised that people would do that. The, because this is what they're accustomed oh, okay. to, so they don't know any different. Then you have to know which fork to use, which bread plate is yours, which napkin is yours, what to do with your napkin. And um, because we, have, we are losing the one-on-one -on -one contact and going more to technology, you find that we don't need the manners as much, or we think. Mm -hmm. But I was pleasantly surprised because um, in December last year, the bank of um, the Swiss bank decided that all, all the employees should one dress appropriately for work, which is a good thing. Two, show good manners. So that means that the tables are turning. Remember, about 15 years ago, IBM decided we'd have dress down uh, Fridays or dress down days, period, and everybody decided they can go to work in flip-flops and not wear a jacket and be very comfortable. Even though you produce when you are dressed down, you would find that when you're dressed for the job or when you know that you look appropriate, you act in a different manner. Do you find that here? Well, uh, it's interesting you're asking me that. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, like in the beginning it helps, but once if you have a job where you're doing the same thing all the time, like subconsciously it probably always has a little effect, but once you know your job pretty well, I don't know. Because you could dress down but still have like your expression come out. You could have like, so you could dress down but maybe... You just wear black, and then you have nice jewelry. I don't know something. Like that. Well, uh, when you say dress down and just wear black, <clears throat> in dressing down, I mean not dressing appropriately for your job. Mm -hmm. But what, whatever color you wear, and you wear jewelry, that's great. Mm -hmm. But what <clears throat> if you try this for a few days? You just wear flip flops or, or running shoes or no jacket, and don't comb your hair, and see how productive you are. And then for another few days, you dress for the part and see which day that you're most productive. You know, when you think about it, because uh, when you look at the <coughs> old movies, like from the 50s or the 40s, you know, everybody dressed up, right? Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wore a suit or whatever. And, uh, but I mean, also, I mean, there's positive or negative. You had a sort of a class distinction, right? The guys that wore suits were of a certain class. The guys yes. that didn't, yes. they were, you know, that's the difference between white collar and blue collar and mm -hmm. all that sort of thing, right? But it, uh, I don't know. But when you look today, um, even though dress down has been around for over 15 years, dressing down, you would find that your television anchors, mm -hmm. some of them dress down. They don't wear a tie, but they certainly wear a jacket. They button their shirts up. They look crisp. They don't come in with crumpled clothes and like they just got out of bed. That's what, that's what Michael Ignatieff was trying to do in the election. He was trying to dress down. Like he took off the jacket and he wore the shirt open. He's trying to you know, be like the common people. Well, I think he had more problems than that <laughs> because um, uh, Mr. Harper also dressed down. He also opened his shirt and didn't wear a tie. You know, but... Um, you need coaching to do that. Yeah, to do that like well. Coaching to do it well, <laughs> but it's interesting. Okay, so the etiquette revolution. Why do we need etiquette? Let's just you know you know just say why do we need it? Why is it something our culture needs? We need manners. We need etiquette because what happens is then if we do not have any standards, if we do not have any rules, we're going back to when we just tore meat off a bone and, and ate it. I thought that's where we were going anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the rapture now. <laughs> the post-rapture. Um, no, we need rules and, uh, to keep us in place. We need graciousness. Because um, when you think about it, if I looked at you and I had this very wooden face, you think there's something wrong with me. If I looked at you and I smiled, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? 
And then you, you take the smile around and you smile and people go around smiling and it's a good thing. It lightens your heart, it lightens your spirit. Someone compliments you, oh Hugh, you look marvelous today. I love, just love that shirt you're wearing. <laughs> Don't you feel good? <laughs> when I look good, I feel good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. But it's, it's just the common courtesy that, that we are missing. And um, I'm not saying that we have to go back to the six days or anything of that nature, but we just need to be a little kinder and gentler to each other. And we find that when we are nice to people, it bounces back to us. Do you think with your experience of bringing this uh, message and some techniques to the high schools, like uh, are the students open to it? Are they, is the next generation, do you think, uh, receptive to the message? I think a great portion of them are. You're going to find those people who don't care, not just in high school, but in life in general. I think that, yes, they do care, and I'm really impressed with the young men who want to um, date girls and look better and feel better about themselves. And my thing is that if I get one person at a time to be a little better and to be a little more courteous, they would help somebody else. So help more people, get more manners running, and um, we got an etiquette nation. Could you even do this in elementary school? Like just get them really young to, you know, with the please and the thank you? And well, you see, um, yeah, the answer to the question is yes. But when you were a child, please and thank you was the norm. You didn't get something if you didn't say please or thank you. I don't know if it's still the norm, though. No, I said when you were a child, yeah. it was the norm. Now you want something, you throw yourself on the floor, and you scream, and you embarrass your parents, and you get it. So um, that is not across the board, mind you. But at the same time, it's very evident in the supermarket, in the stores, and so. So if we started at home, mm -hmm. it would be easier. And yes, we could do that in schools but it depends on if the powers would be uh, interested. Well, remember in the old days, they used to have, uh, and I might have this wrong, but they used to have, what do they call them, finishing schools? Finishing schools, and they're coming back. What are, no, that are was just to back. give people the polish, the all poli the manners, and all that. That edge, to, so that, mm -hmm. to, uh, usually it was so you can get married. <laughs> oh. How old are you when you to a finishing school? I never went to a finishing school. So after high school? Yes, you went to finishing school and then you had a coming out party and you had all the eligible bachelors around, like the bachelor party they're having now on television, the bachelorette and the bachelor. Oh, that'd be such a cool show to be on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you went to, to finishing school so you could fine tune your manners, your behavior, and you came out being a proper young lady. It wasn't for guys? It was only for girls? You had um, four, four guys, but it was more a girl thing because they, the guys had to, to behave in a particular manner anyway. See, they should teach that in school. They should make that part of the curriculum. A lot of people think so, including myself. Yeah. But All right. my revolution, perhaps we'll get there. Okay. All right, Joanna. Now, f now what else do you do besides uh, this revolution? Do you help people, individuals or companies or groups I to get their et etiquette? happening? I help individuals, I help groups, I help organizations. Um, anybody who is interested in being a better person, yes, I am open to that. So I have classes, I have um, group classes or one-on-one -on -one classes, whatever. Some people are not comfortable in a group, mm -hmm. so that you want to be taught one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, that happens. And if people want to get in touch and... Uh inquire about any of that how can they do that is there a website i invite anybody who would like to be in touch with me to visit www.bossselfpro.com that is www.bosselfpro.com or they can send me an email at joanna at bossselfpro.com and i respond great. to all mail because it's the polite thing to do. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> okay, Joanna, thanks for coming in today. Oh, the pleasure was mine. And Thank you, Hugh. And good luck with the revolution, and uh, we'll try to do our little bit here at that channel. I appreciate Natalie. Thank you very much. Yeah, Hugh, great, thank you. Okay.
So we're going to take a little break now, play some more Mo, to, Mo Badass as we get ready for Earl coming in uh, before the show's over. And we're going to come back with Safis coming right after this. You're talking about smiles, Joanna. Well, Safis has got some... Uh, is it Safis? No, it's Dorinka. But Safis is going to be on next. Then Dorinka will be on later. Okay. So it's all happening. Not quite all at once, but it's not October yet. So we'll be right back. <laughs> LiquidLunch-Channel.com. I've lived many places, but none felt like home. I've been homeless so long, it's the reason I know. There's no better feeling than no. 